שלום and welcome everyone. מלקאם סיגד בהל. חג סיגד שמח. My name is Yeshi Mengistu and I am the academic affairs attache at the Consular General of Israel to New England. I am honored to moderate this significant event. Thank you all for joining us and a special thank you for our community partners who made this event possible. Tonight, we are celebrating the special holiday of SIGD, which was recognized as national holiday in 2008 by the State of Israel. When celebrated only by Ethiopian Jewry, SIGD is now recognized by everyone in Israel. As Jewish Ethiopian Israel and myself, representing Israel abroad, the fact that SIGD today is now celebrated by the non-Ethiopian Jewish community fills me with strong sense of both belonging and pride. Historically, Jews living in Ethiopia celebrate Sigd to mark the renewal of covenant between God and the Jewish people and prayed to return to Jerusalem in the future. Now that the majority of Ethiopian Jews are living in Israel, the community also known as Beta Israel marks this holiday by celebrating the return of our homeland, Israel. Tonight, we also tell the story of Beta Israel journey to Israel and the immigrant experience. I'm honored to share my personal story as I myself made Aliyah from Ethiopia to Israel in 1994, when I was five years old. To this day, I remember the excitement of making the journey with my family and arriving home to the Holy Land. In addition, last May, we marked the 30 years anniversary of Operation Solomon which brought 14,000 Ethiopian Jews from Addis Ababa to Israel in only 36 hours, including my uncle Negus. SIGD is an opportunity to learn and teach about the unique story of my community, including its rich history and culture, which if you're Jewish is part of your story as well. This evening, we have a special program for you all. First, we will hear remarks from Ambassador Mirwan Ruben, Consul General of Israel to New England, who will be followed by Yuvi Toshoma, a social entrepreneur and activist who will share her personal story and firsthand knowledge on the background of Ethiopian Jewish traditions. Later on, we will enjoy two songs in Amharic and Hebrew, performed by talented Israeli singer and spoken word artist, Orit Toshima. Now it's my honor to introduce Ambassador Maron Rubin, who has served as Consul General here in New England since November 2020. Thank you, Yeshi. Good evening and Erev Tov. I wish to thank all the viewers who are joining us this evening to celebrate the Jewish Ethiopian holiday of Sigd. In doing so, you are honoring the Ethiopian community of Israel and its miraculous story of Aliyah or immigration to Israel. The story of the Ethiopian rescue and Aliyah to Israel in the 1980s and 1990s is truly unbelievable. This year, we mark the 30th anniversary of what's known as Operation Solomon, an airlifting of more than 14,000 Ethiopian Jews to Israel in 1991. There were many, many heroes involved in this operation, in which, by the way, the US government, and in particular President George H.W. Bush, played a leading role, as did several Jewish philanthropic organizations and of course, the Israeli government and the Israeli Defense Forces. But when all is said and done, it was the courage, sacrifice and idealism of better Israel, the Jews of Ethiopia themselves, who made this happen. For centuries, they yearned for Jerusalem, 
Finally, their dreams were realized. Today, more than 150,000 Ethiopian Jews live in Israel. Even though they constitute only 1.6% of the population, their contribution is immeasurable. The representation of Ethiopian Israelis in Israeli society continues to grow. They serve as public servants, members of parliament, governmental ministers, and IDF officers. They are TV stars, actors, doctors, engineers, journalists, academics, and artists who perform on the largest of stages. Nevertheless, there is still a long way to go in achieving full integration and equality of opportunity, and significant efforts are underway both by the government and civil society to empower this community to reach its full potential. While it is essential to promote Ethiopian uh, integration into Israeli society, this should not be accomplished without the Ethiopian community maintaining its beautiful customs and traditions. As a society, it absorbed millions of immigrants striving to create a new Israeli identity. Many ethnic customs were lost in the process. The Sigd festival is an important Ethiopian tradition and as the official representative of the State of Israel to New England, I could not be more proud to play a part in preserving Ethiopian culture here tonight, on the eve of Sigd. We hope each of you gains a deeper understanding of the Ethiopian-Israeli experience and the diverse population that makes up the multiracial, multicultural and multi-ethnic state that is Israel. Before our program begins, I wish to acknowledge again the broad support we have received from the vast majority of our regional Jewish federations, representing all six New England states. And thank you uh, to Get Connected, Hebrew College, and the Lappin Foundation, as well as your partnership. Thank you in advance to our talented presenters. And finally, I wish to express my appreciation for all the hard work that the consular staff have put in to making tonight's program so meaningful. And now, please enjoy our program. Thank you, Ambassador Ruben. Now I'm excited to introduce you to our keynote speaker, Yuvi Toshoma Katz. Yuvi is a sexual entrepreneur an activist who made Aliyah to Israel from Ethiopia in 1984 at the age of seven after a long period journey through the Sudan's desert. In 2010, her remarkable story was featured in children's books called UV Candy Tree, which is available in both Hebrew and English. In 2011, on Israel's 63rd Independence Day, Yuvi was one of the select group of Israelis chosen to light a torch in the National Yom Ha'atzmaut Ceremony at Mount Herzl in Jerusalem. Later that year, she was awarded the Prime Minister's Prize of Initiatives and Innovations. Now it's my pleasure to welcome Yuvi. Um, so thank you, Yeshi, for the introduction. And thank you, uh, Consul General. So I'm Yuvi, uh, Yuvi Teshome Katz from Gedera, Israel. And today I'm gonna talk with you about the SIGD uh, holiday that we celebrate, I don't know, 2000 years uh, in Ethiopia. And this last decade we celebrated here. So, um, so like I said, my name is Yuvi and I live here for 15 years. I was born in Ethiopia and came to Israel very little. I don't remember much from Ethiopia. Um, so here I grew up thinking things about Ethiopia or um, having my um, um, thoughts about Ethiopia. And um, I have to say as an immigrant, I didn't like it. I didn't like the idea I came from, from Africa. And as a lot of kids here, I tried to be Israeli for a long time. Um, and uh, in some point, I understand that in order to feel like it's home here, I need to understand that I have heritage. And to understand what kind of heritage is that, 
I need to ask my parents, my grandparents, and not the YouTube or the TV or the newspaper. אני יובי, תשור מקץ, נולדתי באתיופיה, בכפר קטן וחמוד. בשנת 1984 עשינו את המסע והגענו לארץ. כמו כל הקהילה התמודדתי עם חוסר השייכות שלי, תחושה של תסכול עמוק, כאב, שמתבטאת באלימות, גם פנימה וגם החוצה. אז קודם כל הבנתי שמה שצריך לעשות זה לייצר את התחושת שייכות הזאת. כשנרגיש שזה הבית שלנו, אז הרבה מהבעיות שלנו ייפתרו. אז אנחנו בעמותת חברים בטבע מפתחים מרחבים של מפגש של החברה הכללית בהובלה של יוצאי אתיופיה. המפגש הזה שבו המבוגרים שלנו מלמדים את הידע שיושב אצלם הכי טוב שיש, מפתח קודם כל תחושה של מסוגלות ובסופו של דבר שייכות. אז אני אהיה שמחה שנבחרתי להיות גיבורת השנה של קשת במפעל הפיס. קבוצות הצעירים שלנו, שזה חבר'ה אחרי צבא, אנחנו אה, בעצם עוזרים להם לפתח את המנהיגות שיש בהם, ובכך בעצם למצות את הפוטנציאל של כל משתתף לשינויים חברתיים. ייסדנו מרחב שאנחנו קוראות לו מתגלה, זה מפגש אחת לחודש, שבו אנחנו אה, מזמינים נשים מגיל 16 ומעלה, מרחב מחבק בהשראה של בית הנשים האתיופי באתיופיה. הייתי רוצה שהחברה שלנו תפתח את הראש, את הלב, למה שהם מביאים איתם עולים חדשים. ולראות איך שהתוספת הזאת היא מועילה לכל אחד ולכולנו ביחד. ולעולים הייתי רוצה להגיד שאפשר להמר כאב, כעס ועצבים בעשייה שמולידה אהבה ושייכות. and to share the story of, of my uh, with you uh, through the village and the coming to Israel um, and the struggling and what happening here with with kids like me I'm not a kid anymore but you know I was a kid here um, and um, and to do that with the sigj that was celebrated in that in some kind of way in Ethiopia and now we We celebrate a little bit uh, different and um, my generation um, uh, wish for this uh, holiday to be and what we did in order to make it um, fitable to what happening here in Israel. So let's go back to Ethiopia. I would read through uh, some pictures that I will share with you. So for the cedar stick that will um, we will talk later. So this is Ethiopia um, and um, actually a lot of green, even though I thought everything is dry there. Um, I was going to, I, I went to visit in, in Ethiopia when I finished my army service um, and I understand that it's really green. So if we talk about the holiday, the sick, the way we celebrated there, my parents and my grandparents, it was by um, even a month before the SIGD, they used to clean themselves, wash the uh, clothes, wash themselves, um, pray a lot, eating a kind, some kind of food for, for being in a pure uh, mood. And all that is to remember We are part of a big, um, we are part, not a big, but we're part of something um, uh, older and um, a very strong thing like being a Jewish. Um, and being a Jew, it means we are part of what's happening in Israel. Uh, I don't think my parents knew there is the state in that or my grandparents at that point far, away, far, far back, but our thoughts was to come to Jerusalem and in the sigd what we did is going to the mount the mountains um, there was a specific mountains that we go um, I didn't have the privilege but my parents did and they pray all day and remind themselves that they are part of the general Jewish all, all over the Ethiopia and even though we we um, A lot of us didn't read or write so uh, the way to remember things like prayer was in oral and all um, all, all kind of stuff stuff um, happened in oral way um, so as a kid 
when the SIGD started or when the SIGD um, were coming soon, we feel it in the air. We feel the, the people around us um, smiling more and very happy and cleaning themselves. And the river was full of people cleaning themselves and the clothes. So it was a, um, it was um, a feeling that the the this holiday is coming. Um, we did more things to in order to keep our Judaism. Uh, and one of the things that I I found very fascinating as a woman and as a mother is that every village you could say if he's if it's uh, a Jewish village or a Christian village or Muslim village uh, because everybody was there. But if I'm a Jew girl and I want to go um, to, a, um, to a village, so from far away, I can say if it's a Jewish village or not. And the way to, uh, to figure it out is uh, if you see in this picture, so there is a, this is the neighborhood. There is a, a specific house which is far away a little bit from the, from the middle. Um, and this is a special, house called the women house and um i really like the idea so every woman that has her period um has the privilege to stop what she's doing whatever she's doing and go to that house to rest not for an hour for a whole week and she have the whole support from her family and from the community um so how they give her support they're taking care of everything that she used to do and this uh week it's really a holiday for her she sleep how she, however she wants or wherever she wants she eats and everybody cook for her but she's not allowed to cook for anyone so i have four kids and i thought wow it's a great idea uh so it's one week when you have your uh period but it's 40 days when you have a baby if it's a boy and 80 days if it's a girl. Um, so for 80 days, you are not doing anything except taking care of your kid, of your baby. Um, that's amazing because it was a place that people, that women teach the other girls, the, the, the little girl, girls about themselves. Um, the way to learn things was to watch and, and after a while to ask things. So it was, kind of a place for relaxation and and uh, learn a lot of things about myself, about my community, about being a woman, about being a woman, a Jewish woman, and that's so. Um, uh, the way we learn everything was by oral, by watching our families, our parents, our grandparents. So I watch my mother taking care of her mother um, so I know I need to take care of, of the grown-up people. Um, so the way it's that just to listen what's happening around me. Um, and actually, uh, another thing is it's, it's not that as a parent, my responsibility is over the whole kids in the neighborhood to take care of them, to, um, uh, to say something if they, have, if they do something wrong. Uh, and the idea that every, every, um, every, uh, the, the, the whole way was by, you know, by, by touching, not talking so much, but seeing, uh, hearing, touching, that's the way to learn in Ethiopia. So this kid learning how to, uh, eventually to help his family with the, with this work that he, he do. And everything that we wanted to eat, we grow, uh, which means that we was very much um, minded and listening to nature. So the rain, it was something that we need for our food. And, um, and um, when we work with each other, so uh, there is a lot of, you know, a big field so there is a, a community uh, words in Amharic says wavara, which mean you have your chavua, your group of people that works with you. So one day we go into your field and we clean and we work with you and 
the other day everybody comes to me so this is the kind of people this this is this the group that taking care of me this is the my my like very close community um another another way to uh, learn things was uh, sitting around the fire at home in the end of the day and having the coffee the grown up having their coffee and we're uh, as a kid listening the stories so there's a very good stories um so you can you can uh imagine we didn't have any tv so the stories was the the highlight of the day for the kids uh but every ethiopian kids know there is no just a story the story was picked because something happened and the one who telling the story which is some which is usually the father or the mother wants to say something not only to tell the story but she is only telling the story and then she finish and nothing so but the kids know something is under that and they stop to thinking about that for themselves um so in some point we 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 said okay it's good to pray for coming to jerusalem but in 84 when my family came and in the 90s when the operation Mo moshe happened uh, so it was opportunity that said we can come to israel we can go to israel actually um and i asked my parents and other grown up here if they knew the challenge they will have coming to Israel, walking to Israel, actually, walking to Sudan and then to Israel. And all the answer was, you know, we knew that. And most of them said, and we will do it again, which, which was amazing for me to, to hear that because I don't remember much, like I said, I was little, but I came with my grandma and I remember fear and I remember, you know, uh, I was hungry all the time. I, I remember very bad things, uh, but the one thing that I do remember very well, it's my grandma. Um, and when we were hungry and we cried, we were little, like I said. Um, so she used to look at us really deep and say, don't worry, nothing, not gonna happen to us. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna come to, to Jerusalem. And I was looking at her and said, how do you know there is robbers here threatening at us? And she say, what do you mean? I know because there is the angels. And she looked at me and said, don't you see the angels? In some point I thought, wow, I'm the only one not seeing the, the angels. And my grandma, she is like the, the smartest woman that I know. And I start to believe there is angels keep taking care of us. And then we come to Israel. Um, and the whole community things to helping each other, to teach each other where it was mass because it was different and not every village living in the same city. So um, even me and my grandma separated. So in this new area, uh, which we don't have a lot of, you know, mountains and and green things and everything is built and very high um, except the visual um, the idea of going to school and to learn everything by reading reading and writing and sitting all day it was a new thing for us um, but um, um, so it was it was new and not easy for us uh, and if we want to help each other, we, don't, we couldn't find a way to do that. So as it happened to a lot of immigrants, we start to be ashamed of ourselves and our parents. And actually all my age group go to uh, boarding school, meaning far away from our uh, families in our communities. So um, for a long time, I mean, I, I was in uh, boarding school, high school, element, um, go to, to the army. Um, and after all that, I get married and have my first baby. And I thought, where I'm going to grow this, when I'm, I'm going to raise this baby, like where in the kibbutz, in the moshav, where it's going to be in a very Ethiopian neighborhood or 
far away from the Ethiopian neighborhood. Um, and for, for, for long, I thought far away from this neighborhood that I was growing up in them is it's the best way. So it means not to be an Ethiopian. Um, but in some point, I understand that really it's not the, it's not the way. Um, first of all, because I look how I look, everybody noticed that I'm Ethiopian. And it's an amazing story that I uh, always tell is when something happened in Israel with the Ethiopian boy, girl, women, man, whatever, all my neighbor, neighbors coming to ask me questions about that and say, if it's happening to me, and I don't know these people from the TV or wherever, except they are from Ethiopia. So I understand that every Ethiopian Jewish in Israel influenced my life, like in a daily life. Uh, if somebody in the 80s, it was, um, uh, like men murdering his wife. So I was like in the middle of something that I didn't know and everybody asked me if I'm okay. Even so, I don't know this guy that murdered his wife or whatever. Um, so in, some point, in that point, I realized that we need to do something else. And, and actually, I don't feel home. Even so, we pray so much to come to Israel. I don't feel Israel is my home. And um, I need to do something about that. So the first thing that we do is creating, actually to go back and to understand what was wrong with the whole idea that we accept to be ashamed of our, who we were. Um, and the one thing that um, me and my friend realized is the whole 30 years, all the people that want to help us see us in, and actually afterwards we too, see us um, in a way that what these people don't have and we can give them. So in the beginning it was clothes and then it was scholarship and whatever. It was a lot of things to give us, um, uh, but never give back. And in some point when a child gets the idea that everybody wants to help him, he get the idea maybe he is so small or so weak that everyone wants to help him. So we create this community, as you see in the picture, of people from all over the, 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 the universe that are living in Israel. All of us wants to feel at home in Israel. And we said, one thing that we want to do is go back in this neighborhood where is a lot of uh, um, Ethiopian families, families are. And the other thing is, we want to be able to see what these communities have to give to the general communities, to the general people in Israel. So it's amazing when you think about that, you see, um, uh, you see there is a, a lot of things that these people uh, can give. So we create this program that these students in the middle, she's from Ethiopia, like you see, and she's helping other kids. Um, actually, through the during the um, the corona, we don't have we don't have the the privilege to to do so at home. So we did that at Zoom, and it's open the um, the um, opportunities to have these meetings from people from where you are, from United States and Israel. So we have this amazing program called English Online. So you can match with the students from here and have a meeting once in a week, uh, talking all of whatever you want, uh, improving the English for the, for the students. So if these people come from the village and they know how to grow their food, we give them a land and they start to grow their food. If in, in, in like in a minute, they were happier and in the minute their kid was proud of them not the other way around. And these people create their own uh, clay. So uh, we want, we create this opportunity to them to teach others. Um, so you remember the women house? So I said, it's, it's not a way that we don't do something like that. So it's not like in Ethiopia, but here in Gedera, once in a month, a lot of women coming for three hours, relaxation, having fun and talking about life. 
uh, and um, we call this Mit Gala. I love this program. Um, and then about the Haggadah, so um, I don't know how many of you know, but here in Israel, because the Sigd is a communal celebration, it's um, actually it's have two parts. The one part is the, um, the fasting. So it's beginning in the morning, going to the mountains, and then you pray half a day and don't, you don't eat. Um, and there is um, something that we do in the mountains. I mean, back in Ethiopia. First, we fast. Second, we gather. Uh, third, we pray for God to come back to Zion, to Jerusalem. And the fourth thing is, um, if there is people there that have issues with each other, the kes, like the rabbi or the leader, bring this, these two together and they need to say sorry, like the slicha between, between them. Um, and when you go to the mount, you pick a stone, a little bit, a, a little stone, put it in your head, going up to the mountains and then take it off and throw it away. Um, after four or five hours of praying and doing what I said, um, they go back from down from the from the mountains to the village, and then they have a celebration um, with the jabo, which is a big chala, and um, eating, dancing, and having fun. So here in Israel, um, in the same day, there is a lot of people going to Jerusalem and having the same thing, going to Jerusalem, fasting the half day, praying, and then in the end of the day, go, go back to their cities and have the dinner with the family or sometimes um, not, not, um, sometimes it's a big thing and sometimes it's, it's not. Um, but when I become a mother, um, I couldn't take my kid and not everybody go to Jerusalem. And if you don't go to Jerusalem, how do you know it's even sigged? You don't see the people going to the river, wash themselves and the clothes. You don't feel that in the air. And a year go by year, I was thinking, well, what, what's going to happen with this, with this holiday? And um, I want to do something uh, that I can do with my kid, with my family. And uh, we start to think about that 10 years uh, ago. And then step by step, we collect the whole thing that I just share with you. What was the, the idea of the SIG and what we, why we celebrate the SIG? Um, and we create this Haggadah uh, that I'm uh, sharing with you. So what we have in this Haggadah is I have it here in Hebrew, um, actually. Um, so we have the whole thing here. Uh, we start with the prayer here um, that the guest said, the leader, the, the you can say the rabbi, um, and some of it it's in Amharic, it's a um, Semitic language, a very holy language. Um, so uh, if I want to do that in my home with my kids, we create this barcode so you can just take a picture of that, of that and skin that actually and hear the prayer. We begin with the prayer, like I said, and actually it's beginning with the story of a uh, memory of the first thing that a kid have, one kid have, and then um, we have um, the, 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 the idea of the stone that I told you about. So that's something that we can do uh, around the table with the stone with our head, and then we take it off and we say something. Uh, or something that we wish for ourselves, or something that we want to throw away for this year. Um, and um, okay. And the main thing of that is the ten comments. Um, the ten comments that we um, share with each other in order to remind ourselves that we are um, 
uh, Jewish and we, we want to go back uh, to, to Israel. So it sounds like that. So if I want to, if I want to um, celebrate the holiday with my family, I can have this guest in my table through these uh, barcodes. And this is the um, Ten Commandments that I told you. Again, I can do that in Amharic and in, in Hebrew, um, command after command. Um, so this is my, uh, my community. And um, I really happy to say that this Haggadah find a lot of young Ethiopian families um, in a way that they feel like they needed that to celebrate the, the holiday. This Agada, it's in Hebrew. And like you said, uh, it's going to be in English for next year. So I would like you to have it and be part of what happening here. And actually, it's um, it's a get, get to uh, the opportunity for other people, not Ethiopian Jew, to celebrate this holiday. We celebrate SIGD. 39 days after Kippur uh, in so and um, we keep this date here in Israel too and in the first years it was something very only for the Ethiopians and it's um, as, as an Ethiopian girl I couldn't have even um, a day off to go to to Jerusalem to celebrate that uh, but in this last year, uh, things has changed. And actually, it's a holiday for everyone, meaning everyone who wants to celebrate uh, to celebrate uh, the SIGD can have the day off. I mean, the Ethiopian, uh, obviously, the day off. Um, and even at school, uh, my kids uh, celebrate that at school. So it's step-by-step Things have, um, have changed uh, in a good way, I think. Um, and I think that the idea of the Haggadah is really that, to, to get the chance for these um, for this, um, families and um, other uh, people from other communities to have this holiday because it's um, that we kept that 2,000 years and uh, we want to share that. Uh, and when we share our thoughts, knowing our knowledge, our skills, and we have a lot, I mean, my parents have a lot of this, um, when we share that with everyone and everyone accept that, that's feel home. And I want to end with that, uh, that after, I don't know, 20 years of doing action, in order to feel at home here in Israel, me and my kids definitely feel at home. And, uh, and actually a lot of people do. And, um, and you know, the one thing that I learned um, from my mother and my grandmother is, if you wanna do something, just do it. If you wanna feel something, just do it. Uh, you want to go to Jerusalem? Just do it. You want whatever. I learned so much just watching them, and they have so much power in this. And I wish my kids and my community and all other communities in Israel get that that this strength needs to be shared. And when we share that, we feel at home. So thank you. And Yeshi, back to you. Thank you, Yuvi, for your wonderful work and inspiring words. Next, we are joining this evening by Orita Shoma, a talented singer and spoken word artist. Orit will perform two songs from her double album. Orit, the virtual stage is yours.
Everyone who's watching, my name is Ori Teshuma. We have Eviatar means on the keyboard. I'm a spoken word artist. The next song called In Between. It's a song I wrote about a conversation I had with my mother when I was a teenager. I asked her, do she regret coming to Israel because of the struggle? And her answer was, don't feel sorry for me. Only God can feel sorry for me. We made our dream come true after 2,500 years and we came to Israel, we came to Zion. Now it's your turn to deal with the problems that you have here. So just remember you're just in between like we were and you're gonna get there. So the next song called In Between. בשביל זה יש לנו את אלוהים. אתם בסך הכל בין לבין, ותכף אתם מגיעים. מכיתה ח' עד י"ב עליתי בכל מוצאי שבת שנייה על קו 201 בחזרה מהבית לפנימיה. רחוב או תל אביב, תל אביב צומת העוגן, הליכה של 20 דקות בין הרפתות ומגיעים לקיבוץ מעברות. דילגתי לי בין זהויות עם נעלי אדידה, שר בקווים במשך חמש שנים, בין הקיבוץ לבין השכונה, בין הספסלים לבין הבריכה, בין החוגים לאלתורים, בין החופש לבין החוקים. אני מרשה לעצמי להיזכר בימים שהייתי נערה, לא בטוחה, לא בעולם ובטח שלא בעצמה, מחכה בתחנה המרכזית לשייכות עם שאר הנערים והנערות. ועל הגב הקטן שלנו תיקים ענקיים מלאי אוצרות הישרדות זהותית. כשהייתי חוזרת הביתה, הייתי זורקת את התיקים על הרצפה, מפגינה ביטחון עצמי מנופח לאימא שלי גם כשהייתי חלולה, בניסיון לשכנע אותה שתיתן לי להמשיך ללכת לפנימיה. בשבת בבוקר הייתי קמה לפני כל האחים שלי, מחכה לה על הסופה, צמאה לקבל כל פיסת מידע. שתוכיח לי שזו טעות שאנחנו פה. היא הייתה חוזרת מבית הכנסת, לבושה בנטל הלבנה. אני מציקה ושואלת אותה על המסע, והיא עונה לי על ירושלים. וכנערה מתבגרת, מתוך קנאה בעוצמות האמונה שלה, הייתי שואלת, תגידי אימא, את לא מצטערת שעלית? איבדת את אימא שלך ותינוק בן חצי שנה במחנה הפליטים, תסתכלי על הרבנות, המשטרה, הזריקות, הקליטה, נספור למקרה התחייה וההתאבדויות, והיא לא נותרת גרגיר של טינה. להפך, היא מוקירה. אנקואנה דרסנה לירוסלם. תראי נאני, אנחנו זכינו להגשים חלום בן יותר מאלפיים שנה יחד עם קהילה שלמה. אז אל תרחמי עליי, אל תרחמי, בשביל זה יש לנו את אלוהים. אתם בסך הכל בדיוק כמונו, בין לבין, ותכף, תכף אתם מגיעים. ואיך אנחנו מגיעים, אמא? איך אנחנו מגיעים? לוקחים את המורשת העתיקה בשתי ידיים ושומרים עליה פרש. אנחנו יהלומים שאי אפשר ללטש. ממה אפריקה ומזרח תיכון חדש מתמזגים לתוך סיר הלחץ של ישראל, ורק אלוהים ואנחנו יודעים מה מתבשל. אז אל תרחמו עליי, אל תרחמו. בשביל זה יש לי את אלוהים. אני בסך הכל בין לבין, ותכף, תכף מגיעים. song called Forgive Me Ethiopia. I wrote this song after I realized I don't have to abandon and neglect my identity to try to be this perfect Israeli. I can take my Ethiopian identity and my Israeli identity and make it one. So the next song called Forgive Me Ethiopia.
הקשוח, האור המתוח, הקצב בכתפיים, קפה הבון האימימה בצהריים, הכנסת האורחים, ביקורי החולים, אוכל שמזין, קסם ברגליים, לחיצת יד בשתי ידיים, אומנות הסבלנות, ההתמסרות, עקידה למבוגרים, העומד שבצעירים, אירועים עם אלפי אנשים שבאים לנחם או לשמח בלי תמורה. הכיר את עיני עינת אתיופיה, סליחה. כמעט שכחתי להשאיר לך מקום. זהותי נפלה בשבי מלחמות היומיום. האירוניה ש... בית הישראל כבר בבית של גזייה ורמלק ישראל עוררה בי מבוכה. עד שמצאתי את עצמי מתעטפת בשרידים של אמונה, עד שתחלוף לה עוד סערת הכפשה או גחמה של פרופסורים לפקפוקים שתכלס מה בדיוק הם יודעים עלינו. מה הם יודעים הרי זו רק אתיופיה ואלוהי ישראל עדים שאלפיים חמש מאות שנים את היית לנו למקלט. איך בסוף הגענו, איך שרדנו, לא שכחנו את ירושלים, אה? אבל די מהר שכחתי אותך, תראי, זה לא שאני חוזרת, את הרי יודעת שאין לי ארץ אחרת. ישראל היא האחת, אך אדם השוכח עברו יעשה טעויות כל ימי חייו. אני נתתי לכל מי שרצה להגדיר את זהותי, הלוא העוול בכפי, עד שתפילות של אבות אבותיי, לופפו סביב קרסוליי, שאבו אותי אל קרקע את הנפש. מצופים של דיכוי ממסדי וסטטיסטיקות ניסו לתכנת לי את הרגש אבל לא לסתם קוראים לנו ג'גנה, אה? רק האמיצים יעזו לצלול אל תוך השקט בשקט אל עברה ספינה שננטשה רק שמצאנו את אוצר הנחמה ונשבעתי שאני מעדיפה למות פיראטית מאוד מכונה רק רגע לפני שאני יוצאת לדרך תני לי לבקש סליחה הכר את עיני עינת אתיופי הרי לא באמת תוכל להחזיר לך בחזרה מהשיער הקשוח עד האור המתוח, הקצב בכתפיים, קפה הבון האימים בצהריים, הכנסת האורחים, ביקורי החולים, אוכל שמזין, קסם ברגליים, לחיצת יד בשתי ידיים, אומנות הסבלנות, ההתמסרות, עקידה למבוגרים, העומד שבצעירים, אירועים עם אלפי אנשים שבאים, באים, 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 לנחם או לשמח בלי תמורה. עיני עינת אתיופיה, סליחה, כמעט שכחתי להשאיר לך מקום. תני לי לכתוב לך במקום. Thank you, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Awit, for this moving performance. I would like also to thank you, our audience at home, for attending this event, hosted by Consulate General of Israel to New England, and our co-sponsors from all the six New England states. Toda Raba, and again, Melkam Sigbahal, Vechag Sameach, good night.